Our game was inspired by AI Dungeon, a text-based RPG where the story is generated with artificial intelligence. In AI Dungeon, a player is given a description of who they are and what the setting is, and can type in a response which the artificial intelligence uses to progress the story. We took this idea of an AI generated story, but wanted to add visuals and be able to actually play the story that was generated, rather than just type responses. We were inspired by 2D pixel games for the art style of the game, and the top down view of a game called The Binding of Isaac. We created the game in a 3D Unity project with 2D sprites to give a unique 2.5D effect for the game. Creating a completely non-text based, AI generated world from nothing is a very big task, bigger than we had the time for, so we scaled down the scope of the game to generate stories based off a few predefined locations. Because we cannot capture the full detail of the story and gameplay elements, the full text of the story is given to the player in the game in the form of a book which they can read. We kept the theme of AI Dungeon, so our game is a medieval fantasy game, where the player can collect weapons and armour and fight monsters. The model was therefore trained on our own web scrape data based on this theme to create the story we wanted. We additionally wanted the player to be able to interact with NPCs which spawn in the world, and rather than just choosing predefined conversation options or typing what you want to say, we use speech recognition to allow the player to use their microphone to talk to the NPC. The speech from the player is fed into our story model and the NPC will answer back according to the story. The game plays as follows. From a selection of starting prompts based on a few predefined locations, the player can choose their own story. Our wild generation model will use this prompt to construct a starting zone with structures, entities and items related to the initial prompt. Our game maps the natural language output of GPT-2 to in-game assets with the use of tokenization and some pseudo-mapping from natural language. The player can then explore the map and ask nearby NPCs questions about the setting using their microphone. We use Google's speech API for speech to text. The player's input and questions are fed back into the story context knowledge base and more areas of the world are generated and are used in the natural text of the story, depending on the questions the player asks. The more they play, the more advanced the AI and thus the world becomes, tailored to each individual player. The player can also go into dungeons and caves to fight monsters and the boss, which is a dragon. Chests appear in the dungeons and caves which contain weapons and armour to help the player throughout their playthrough. Killing a monster will drop a coin, which is added to the player's score. Once the player kills the boss in an area, they win. The full story generated by our model is shown in the form of a book which the player can read whilst playing the game. The book updates as the player visits more areas of the world. Upon entering the game, the player is presented with a selection of prompts for story generation. These are pre-generated and three random ones are chosen. When entering the world, these prompts get fed into a natural language processing prompt model and a section of the generated story appears in the book. Interactions from NPCs as well as freshly generated prompts for further biomes get fed into the book and NPCs will reference this story so far. This works as our dialogue model dataset was transformed to include tokens which represented fantasy names and these same tokens are generated by our world generation scripts. Our prompt model only uses natural text and so provides context and descriptions for areas in the world. The player can interact with any NPC by approaching them. The player presses the mic button on the screen to start the recording, says what they want to say, presses the mic button again to stop the recording, and the text of what they said is shown in the text box. The player then presses the send button to send the text to the model, and the NPC the player is nearest to will respond. The book will also log what has been generated by the dialogue model. The backend web servers, databases and AI workers can scale up infinitely to support as many users as required. This would allow many people to play our game at once. If the player approaches a chest, the chest will show an opening animation to indicate that the player is able to interact with it. 
When the player interacts with the chest, the item in the chest will appear on the floor. The player can walk over the item to add it to their inventory. Clicking on one of the items will equip it, as shown by this UI. Equipping armour will make the player take less damage from enemies, and equipping a weapon allows the player to deal more damage to enemies. The layout of each area in the game is randomly generated. Foliage is placed in the forest, desert and meadow biomes using Poisson disk distributions, while small paths are drawn to the houses using A-star path finding. The layout of the dungeon and caves are also randomly generated, as well as the monsters and items inside the chests. When researching how to implement speech-to-text with Unity and WebGL, we found there was no cross-browser solution for connecting to the Google Cloud API in Unity. It required a bridge from Unity to raw HTML and JavaScript. The main issue was that most Unity plugins that did speech-to-text used a web speech API exclusive to Chrome and Chromium browsers, while we wanted our solution to work on any browser. There was another plugin called WebGL Speech that seemed promising, however, we had no luck getting it to be compatible with the Google Cloud Transcription API in the same project, which at the time was our working idea. So we used the WebGL Microphone plugin, which allows the use of a microphone with WebGL. We converted the Unity audio clip to a mono-channel 16-bit linear PCM encoding of the audio clip and then transformed it into a base64 string. This string was passed to the WebGL template HTML via a JSLib file using a DLL internal external Unity call and then sent to the Google Cloud speech-to-text API with mono, 16-bit LPCM and 44,210Hz sample rate request headers. The result is then passed back to the Unity instance via send message. This does not use the Chromium exclusive web speech API and is the only solution we could find, but we believe this to be one of the main achievements of our project.